What do you mean that some bugs are very close to being resistant? What do we do? Why isn't this a top news story? There are bacteria now that are nearly untreatable. Uh, unfortunately, the media likes disasters that have already happened. They love to cover Katrina. They're not so good at covering the next Katrina that might come about or might not. And so we, you know, we find ourselves in a situation of always covering terrible, depressing, upsetting stories rather than, you know, what about the stories about the public health hero who did such a great job, nobody's ever heard of him or her. Um, we need public health heroes working in the trenches to tackle this problem, but they can't do it free. They can't do it without resources and they can't do it without political leadership. So these, these public health servants, a lot of them are at the CDC, they're telling us, they're tracking some of the worst, most resistant strains of bacteria, the ones that are already killing people. They've told us very clearly that these are gonna get worse, more people are gonna die and get sick. Um, uh, and they would like to take action. We have plenty of reports telling us what action should be taken, um, uh, but they're just not happening. We need the government to set targets for reducing use, uh, and then there needs to be some follow through. Really, we all have a role. CEOs of meat companies have a role. If they answer to shareholders, the shareholders have a role to demand that they take action to reduce antibiotic use. You can, and some of them are figuring that out. You know, the Tysons and the Purdue's have already greatly decreased their antibiotic use. Um, the pork companies like Smithfield or Hormel, not so much. You know, cattle companies, a little trickier because there aren't like big cattle companies that everybody recognizes. They're, it's much more fragmented, so it's harder to hold any one company responsible. What is MRSA, and do you only get this from hospitals? Uh, so one of the problems with talking about the superbug crisis is that a lot of the bacteria, nobody knows what they are or can remember them. So people recognize when you, they recognize bacteria like salmonella. We know that causes food poisoning. Maybe campylobacter, which causes an equal number of food poisoning cases. Um, staph, everybody knows about staph infections. But the worst superbugs are only certain strains of those common bacteria. So for staph, the really bad one is called methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA, MRSA. And uh, right now, it used to just be a problem in hospitals, but for many years now, it's been cropping up in communities as well. By communities, I mean that just your average person, your average teenager or healthy adult is suddenly getting MRSA and ending up near death in the hospital because it's either difficult to treat, so they get very sick by the time they figure that out, or uh, you know, close to impossible to treat. That's why we have more than 19,000 deaths a year from MRSA, and it's athletes, it's it's, you know, it's football players and cheerleaders and, you know, perfectly healthy 20-year-olds who are just up and dying or getting maimed or disabled. Terrible, terrible infection. What can we do to stop a future where antibiotics don't work? Uh, well... The main thing is to stop using antibiotics when we really don't need them to work today. Uh, and we probably also could be investing in some other things that help us avoid using antibiotics. So for example, um, if we know there's a source of infection somewhere, let's figure out what else we can do to clean that environment, you know, to keep it cleaner. We're never going to, it's not like a battle. Everyone wants to use a battle member for, metaphor where, where bacteria are the, are the enemy and our job is to fight the bacteria. First of all, that's wrong. Bacteria, we need bacteria. What we don't want 
is resistant bacteria. So the, the battle metaphor has really served us poorly because everybody's reaction has been to flood their households with antibacterial soaps. Well, guess what? You use an antibacterial soap and you're breeding antibiotic resistant bacteria. <laughs> if you take antibiotics when you don't need them, you're bringing about more antibiotic resistant bacteria. So the key is not to fight bacteria as if they're the enemy. The key is to treasure antibiotics as if they're an incredibly miraculous tool and use them very, very, very sparingly and to make sure drug companies use them very, very, very sparingly as well. Not so good for a shareholder model though, is it? So that's, that's one of the most challenging things is to figure out how do we try and invent new antibiotics and then uh, you know, if it's a company creating them, we have to convince the company that, yes, we want you to create this antibiotic, but we don't actually want you to sell a lot of it. <laughs> How do bacteria actually become resistant to antibiotics? Yeah, that, it's a very complicated, in-depth explanation, but it doesn't have to be. It really boils back to Darwin and evolution. So bacteria are one of the places we see evolution play out the quickest. And basically evolution says, if you put it, whether it's a human being or a bacteria, you put it in a challenging environment and you're gonna select for the bacteria or the person who's the best equipped to fight that challenge. Well, when we put antibiotics into an environment, we're stressing the bacteria. And the bacteria that are gonna win out that are gonna outcompete their neighboring bacteria are the ones that are resistant. Now some resistance already lives around us in bacteria. They always have. The difference is that we've now flooded our environments with antibiotics and so we keep selecting more and more for those resistant bacteria. And whereas before they might have been resistant to one drug, maybe they were just resistant to penicillin, now more and more there's these superbugs that are resistant to 12, even more antibiotics, and they're all connected, and they're passing that resistance on to other, other bacteria, making them resistant too. The reason bacteria become resistant is that they acquire the genes that make them resistant. The big question is why do they want to get those genes? Because it, it costs them something to get resistance genes. There has to be a good compelling need for them and we provide that need by flooding our environment with antibiotics. If we take away that flood of antibiotics or even reduce it, we make it so that bacteria will not uh, find an evolutionary advantage to seek out those genes.